Hello, I'm Virginia, and welcome to Energy Matters News. According to the Clean Energy Council, Dubbo in New South Wales has emerged as the solar power capital of Australia. The Council's breakdown of solar use by postcode shows a clear bias towards regional Australia and city suburbs with lower than average income. 28% of households have installed solar power in Dubbo, followed closely by 27.3% in Caloundra, Queensland. The data comes from the former Office of the Renewable Energy Regulator, which was amalgamated into the federal government's Clean Energy Regulator as part of the Carbon Price Plan. The figures show that regional areas, a high proportion of retirees, and lower income suburbs situated near the edges of metropolitan areas tend to have installed more panels per capita than wealthier areas. University of Delaware mechanical engineering doctoral candidate Eric Kopf is working on a reactor that uses highly concentrated sunlight and zinc oxide powder to produce hydrogen. Light concentrated to the equivalent of 10,000 suns will be focused down into the reactor, generating temperatures of over 1,600 degrees Celsius. The addition of the zinc oxide to the water in this heat achieves a reaction which creates hydrogen. Kerpf has commenced six weeks of testing the prototype's effectiveness at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich. AGL's recent published criticism of solar feed-in tariffs was shortly followed by the news relating to its continued pursuit of gas and coal-fired electricity generation. A report by AGL takes aim at Queensland's highly popular solar feed-in tariff, referring to it as regressive taxation, and calls into question small-scale solar's merit order effect. However, investment plans include the acquisition of the remainder of Victoria's Loy Yang A power station and adjacent coal mine. It has also confirmed the Victorian state government has approved the development of a $600 million gas-fired power station at Tyrone, north of Port Ferry. Researchers have developed flexible, stretchable, polymer-based solar cells on plastic foil substrates thinner than spider silk and able to generate 10 watts per gram. Cooperation between scientists at the Johannes Kepler University Linz in Austria and the University of Tokyo led to the development of the cells. While not necessarily suitable for traditional solar panels, the development has applications for electronic textiles, synthetic skin, and robotics. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check the Energy Matters website for further information on any of the news items covered in this episode.